The toughest part about being a model builder is deciding what model to build. Don't go away. Hello everybody and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And I told you guys that with the completion of Truck 18 sitting over my shoulder, um, I wanted to keep a model going at all times. Look, see, here's the deal. Model building is my favorite hobby. Okay, I've been doing it my whole life. I love doing it. Um, and so I need to do it more. That's what I've decided. So, um, as soon as truck 18 was over, I decided I needed to start another model. Now, look, a model, the level of truck 18 takes a lot out of me. I don't want to do something like that. I want to some, something a little more simple, you know, a little easier. So I narrowed it down to one of two models, either the visible a V8 engine that my friends uh, Ken and Keith gave me for Christmas, or the one I chose, the Wolfman. Let's take a look at this. All right. Growing up, I loved these creature kits, okay? They were just a lot of fun for me. Um, there's not a lot in the building. It's all about... The painting, and I always enjoyed that part. Uh, as you can see, this is the Atlantis Wolfman glow in the dark. Uh, basically, it's a remake of the Aurora. Okay, uh, Wolfman glows in the dark. Now, I'm hoping, much like the Hunchback, there's two of them in here. Okay, the Hunchback came with a complete regular plastic Hunchback. And a glow-in-the-dark hunchback. So I'm hoping there's two in here. Okay, so here we go. Glows in the dark, glows in the dark, glows in the dark. Okay, we look underneath here. Uh, the complete original kit made from the original molds includes finely detailed Wolfman figure, two rats, a skull, detailed base with nameplate, and extra glow-in-the-dark parts. So I don't know. It may just... B, you can make his head and his hands glow in the dark, and that's it. So I don't know. We'll see. But it's got a little little base here for him to stand on and stuff. Um, I, I don't know where I'm going to go with this yet. I, I don't know how I'm going to proceed. But uh, let's open it up and take a look. So, yeah, um, I'm going to keep a model in the works at all times um and, and unless it's a, a big project like the uh, truck 18 where it's really uh making a mess of my work area and stuff like that i still plan on on doing a lot of other stuff but i want to have a model going let's see here all right there we go Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Here, as I take stuff out, I can move it right into the other box. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, look, see, this is not going to have two full kits in it. Okay. start with the decal or not the decals the instructions we're not going to need the box because there's not a lot here okay so let's take a look at the instruction sheet instructions for assembling the wolfman atlantis a450 build and paint your model any way you want but first read the general instructions on the back page whole thing about the wolfman that's pretty cool And then look, here we go. Look at that. Okay, so the you know you have to assemble the base, 
and the Wolfman. This is pretty standard for these kits. The the legs, and then they glue together. You got in this case we have uh, hairy leg fronts and feet, uh, chest, back, head. Okay. Uh, rope for his waist. Of course, you know I'll be putting some real cord there. Uh, what'd be really cool is to put real hair on him. You know, when I did the, uh, the mummy, and I'll show you a picture of him right here. Uh, when I did the mummy, I, I wrapped him in, in a gauze. And I think it came out pretty cool. What do you think? Put it in the comments down below. Do you like it that way or should I have just painted it? I don't know. Put a lot of work into that gauze, let me tell you. So hopefully you like it. Yeah, very simple build. And then here's some some pictures. I believe I have a Phantom of the Opera, and I believe I have a resin head for him. I know I have a Forgotten Prisoner. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Not sure how I'm going to go about dealing with some of this stuff, though. All right, let's put that in here. Now let's look at all the glow pieces. Okay. These are the pieces that were loose. Okay, so we have a a glow head. Glow skull, that's cool. Glow rats, that's cool. Okay. So I'll probably use the glow rats and the glow skull, but not the hands and the head. All right. So there's all that. As you see, not a lot to this kit. And that's really why I picked it, because um, I didn't want to have a whole big thing like Truck 18 for right now. I just wanted to have a model that I could build. All right. Oof, that's terrible. It's part of the rock face thing. Definitely going to need some work to make it look like rocks, because... That looks like anything but rocks. Terrible. Terrible. Hey, you know, it's made from the original molds. A couple zillion years old. Okay. All right, let's see what we got here. Here's a sprue. Look at this. Now, that's pretty neat. Okay, in addition to... Is that what I think it is? I think that's a mouth. So look. Let me show you this. And they were notorious for this. See here how there's nothing in his mouth? I think this is a mouthpiece that goes into the head. But it's got this cool black skull. That's pretty neat. All right. There's, you know, the hair pattern on this doesn't look terrible. You know, I'll tell you something that I'm not really good at. I need to, to do some research. and Maybe I'll have something I can share with you in this build. Uh, painting clothes. And getting them to look cloth-like. It's really difficult. Okay. And just the other parts of the legs, arms, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, feet, the other half of the hands. What? Oh, that's the knot on his white uh, belt there. Okay. And you see here... See, he's mouthless, but I swear, if that's not what this is, let's get the instructions out and see if it shows what that is. I think it's a piece to go in his mouth. Um, that's not why a lot of guys have made resin heads for these things, um, to give them a mouth. Yeah, you see inside of the mouth, 
it's it's a new piece they must have made and added. And so it's it's right here inside of mouth and it goes there and you can put it in either head and it uh fills in this mouth hole. All right. So that that's kind of neat. All right. So there it is. So you know, like I do, what I need to do here is I need to go ahead and make a quick plan. Uh, I'm thinking. I can just assemble the entire Wolfman. The only places where there's going to be a paint issue is at the cuffs of the legs, and you, you know, it, it shouldn't be that hard to paint around those. Uh, the cuffs of the legs and and the waistband here. Uh, other than that, he's just a pant color and wolf colors. So, yeah, um, I think I could just build him up completely. Build the rocks up separately in the little accoutrements, and we'll we'll leave it like that. So let's go ahead and and maybe start building the Wolfman himself, just for fun. It's just for fun. Let's get to cutting.
So I'm going to switch to this Tamiya cement, and this is more like a bottle of tester's glue. Um, it's got a longer open time, it's thicker, it's sticky. Um, this gives me an opportunity to put parts together um, that have a bigger surface area that needs to be glued, or, you know... Uh, just is a maybe a fragile area where I need more strength and grip. So, um, you know, it depends. Every, every situation is unique, whether I use Tamiya Thin Cement, Tamiya Thin Quick Drying Cement, or whether I just use this adhesive here. Um, but you see, I've got these, these large mating surfaces, and so this is a better choice. I can spread it around, Make sure I get all of the connecting areas, and I don't have to rush for fear that this is going to dry up before I put the two parts together. And then it also gives me a little open time to make any adjustments to the positioning of the part and make sure everything is just right before it really sets up. So, not sure how things are going to hold together. There's lots of options. There's little spring clamps that you can get at Harbor Freight. There's tape, there's rubber bands, um, you name it. There's a lot of ways to hold your parts together uh, while the cement dries. So, you know, be creative, do what you got to do, and make sure everything is nice and perfect fitting while the glue dries. Well, this is a lot of fun. He's actually starting to look like a werewolf. And remember, I talked to you about using this uh, uh, Tamiya glue to put larger uh, areas together that have more surface area. Here you're seeing the perfect uh, example where I've got to join the upper body to the lower body. Um, not only is there more surface area, but, you know... I need to be able to tweak the positioning and make sure everything is just right before it finally sets up. So again, glue choice, very important. So the best gluing techniques in the world, the best Trimming and prep work and everything else isn't always going to be the answer to every seam. You're going to need to do some work. You're going to need to do some sanding, maybe a little filling, whatever the case may be here. Um, I'm not going to have to do all that much sanding, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to paint him completely. I'm going to put real hair on him. Oh yeah, I'm going to put real hair on him. So right now, all I really need to do on like the arms and torso and stuff like that is I just need to make sure everything is smooth and, and okay because it's all going to be covered with hair. Now, I've never done anything like this before. Well, okay, that's not entirely true. When I did the mummy model, I wrapped the mummy in real cloth. Um, so I guess maybe this is in the same vein, but... I went to Hobby Lobby and I bought some uh, hair. <laughs> and I, I bought like a ton of glues and I'm going to put hair on them. So I do need, especially on the pants, to treat the seams because you're going to see the pants completely. But the rest of the body, I'm just kind of giving them a, a quick once over with the uh, sanding stick to make sure everything is looking good. Okay, so my original plan was to use one of the heads as a test case because this kit came, came with two heads, uh, the regular head and the glow-in-the-dark head. So I glued the glow-in-the-dark head together, painted it black, and I was going to use it as a test piece to see how the, the hair thing would work out. Um, 
But to do that and make it look right, I kind of needed to put a little effort into it. So I painted it black, and now I'm painting the face kind of a dark brown, and then I'll put a little bit of the detail in it. Um, I won't go hog crazy, but, you know, just enough. And then I'm going to start to lay hair down on the head and see how it comes out to decide if I want to push forward with this or not. Okay, so I've got the head ready, and you can see here I've got my little hair things. I think I probably should have just used a solid brown one, but I used this kind of two-tone hair, and I, I, I think in the end it's part of what I don't like about the way this came out. I'm going to tell you right now, when you look at this with your naked eyes, I think it looks pretty good. But man, when you start taking pictures of it and getting those close-ups and getting in deep, I don't think it looks very good. I really don't. And um, you'll see what I'm talking about in the glamour shots at the end because I don't think they, they look very good. I'll, I'll love to hear your comments on it. Um, but then I pull it away and I look at it with my naked eye and I think, hey, that came out pretty good. So uh, a couple things I would do different is uh, I would use solid brown hair um, because I think this makes him look splotchy, all right? And I, I don't like the way that looks. Um, and I, I would probably work in smaller layers because what I have to do here is I have to layer this hair on. And so you actually have to start kind of like at the bottom layer and then put new layers over. Now you see, I bought a ton of different glues because I didn't know what were, would work. I'm gonna use this quick hold stuff, um, but I bought a bunch of different glues. And so my plan is I'm gonna put some glue down at the bottom where the bottom layer would be. Then I'll snip off a little bit of hair and I'll glue it on. Then another layer of glue, another layer of hair, another layer of glue, another layer of hair. And the key here, is to try to think of it as how the hair actually flows on the figure, you know? So you're, you're trying to layer the hair the way it looks in the movies, I guess. So it, it's, it's difficult. I mean, you know, if you were a barber, this would probably be a lot easier because at the end, I actually have to give this thing a haircut and everything, and it's not that easy. So uh, using this quick hold glue, I'm going to put some around the neck, then using a very sharp pair of scissors, uh, I will pluck off um, a little layer of hair and just kind of lay the ends into the glue and leave the other end free and loose and easy. And then I'm just going to keep doing that over the whole head. Now, uh, again, more honesty here. The head comes out way better than the body. Uh, probably, th there's probably a lot of reasons for it. First of all, the volume, it's a much smaller thing. Um, second of all, because I was in experimental mode, uh, I was being a little more careful, a little more thoughtful. Um, and the head actually comes out really, really good. And it's the body where it starts. I, I really do think it was my choice of fur. I think the lighter color and darker color make him look splotchy and messy. And um, I don't know. You you tell me at the end of the video when you see the final product, you tell me. Now, I will say this. I'm not unhappy with this, but if I were going to build another werewolf, I probably would just go back to painting his hair. Um, but hey, again, I can't wait to hear your comments on this. I really can't. So what I'm doing is with my uh, uh, all the hair on, I'm kind of just licking my finger and 
slicking his hair back, you know, kind of basically combing his hair. Oh, now I'm actually just using some of my uh, paintbrush water to kind of slick his hair back. Later, I'm going to do things like I'm going to use some actual hair gel, and uh, my wife is going to lend me a Barbie hairbrush that I can brush his hair with. You know, this becomes a whole hair thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's it's It almost becomes comedic at, at some level. But right about now, I'm actually feeling this. It's looking really good in my opinion. And um, it, it makes me decide not only am I going to move on, I'm going to use this head. I'm not going to do it again. This, this test head has come out so well that this is going to be the, the actual head. And so what I'm going to actually have to do, because I already glued the other head onto the model, I'm going to have to snap that off and then glue this head on. But first things first, we got to get him groomed up a little bit so he looks right. Okay, so here we are in full-on hair mode, putting hair all over his body. And what I did is, because he's got pants on, I started at his waistline. Rim of glue, rim of hair, then rim of glue, rim of hair. And I, I'm going to tell you, I actually did a terrible job of the body on the first pass and ripped off most of the hair and started over and put it on again because uh, I kind of lost the concept of how the hair should flow on his upper body when it starts to transition into his shoulders and his arms and it got really, really messy, okay? And I hated it. So uh, later I pulled all of this off and actually this might even be the second time around. I, I don't know, but I did do it twice. Um, the second time, infinitely better, but like I said, I, I really am not a fan of the fur color choice I made, um, and again, you know, I, look, I, I'm being a little hard on myself, because like I said, it looks good up, up close and personal. You know, you walk up and look at this thing, it looks pretty good. You take detailed, high-resolution pictures, large pictures, they, they emphasize every little issue and uh, honestly in a, in an attempt to present this honestly and fairly I'm actually not I'm I'm presenting it very unfairly to myself um you know because what you're going to see at the end of this video is not really what it looks like and yeah maybe I'm just uh trying to blow some smoke up your uh, backsides here and make it sound better than it is I don't I don't know um the pictures, I'm, do you get the idea that I'm not happy with what I was able to do in glamour shots? I think they look like crap, um, but I did my very best here uh, to, to give you a fair representation of what the, the final outcome looks like so you can make a decision on if uh, putting real hair on your werewolf is for you or not. So anyhow, I got a lot of work to do, a lot of hair to put on. Let's keep going. Okay, so I'm going to leave all the, the glue dry on the werewolf body and I'm going to turn my attention back to the head again because now I've decided that this is the head I'm going to use. Now I need to do some details. I need to paint the end of his nose black, his lips black. I need to paint his teeth. i got to do his eyes. So we, we can start the detail work on the werewolf's face. A lot of it gets lost, though, because, you know, it's also dark. It's blacks and browns, you know. Uh, but hey, well, it is what it is, you know. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get all the, these details painted in, and then we'll move along. Okay, so the, the only way to really do the hair is it's going to be too long, okay? At least I thought it was too long. So what I'm doing is, again, I'm just trying to shape it. Uh, I'm using a combination of water and just the way I glue it on, uh, and I'm, I'm giving him a little bit of a haircut and trimming the hair back down so it looks more like what it should. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of stuff that's foreign to me, but I'm, I'm going to do the best I can, and... and I kind of dig it. I, I really don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know. You know. Hey, it is what it is. So anyhow, we got to give the werewolf a haircut and 
get the hair all laying in the right directions. And so that's what I'm working on here. And who said a 62-year-old man can't play with Barbie stuff? Because here I am giving my werewolf a haircut and using my Barbie brush to comb out his flowing locks. Okay, so they did a great job in, in modeling in texture into his pants, which makes me kind of feel like the pants are like a denim. So uh, we're going to paint the pants blue, and then we're going to do some highlights to the torn and shredded areas uh, and things like that. But we got to start by painting everything blue. Now, uh, I would have put a, a rope around his waist like it's molded in there, put a real rope in there, but it's all covered in hair, so I dodge that bullet and don't have to do that. So all I'm going to do is just uh, paint his uh, pants with some Tamiya Flat Blue, and uh, then we'll let that dry. You see right by my right hand, that long um, engraver looking thing? That's actually a little vacuum. It's a tiny little vacuum. And let me tell you something, it was the best investment ever. I'm gonna put a link in the description because Man, with all this hair cutting and stuff that I'm doing, the vacuum was invaluable at cleaning things up. Uh, it's a little USB powered. You charge it and it's got a rechargeable battery and it, it sits on my desk now and I can just vacuum up little messes uh, really super easy and I love this thing. Anyhow, so the werewolf's fur is taking shape. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, the pants are nice and dry, and I'm going to use um, oil brushers to uh, put some highlights in. I'm going to use a little buff color up in the uh, thighs to make it look like the, the fabric is wearing a little bit. And there are some molded in areas where you can see uh, some of the, the fabric is fraying, so I'll use the buff there. Um, and, you know, just highlight in different areas to make the jeans look uh, a little worn and threadbare. Now it's time for the finishing touches on the werewolf's face. This is the best part, okay? This is when it really starts to come to life. Um, the eyes and the teeth and the mouth. <coughs> <coughs> So, first of all, never use white for your eyes. Eyes aren't white, okay? They're kind of a, a, a tan, a very light tan, or in my case, because it's a werewolf, I'm using a little bit of this uh, kind of grody-looking yellow mixed in with my white, and I'm going to use that for both the uh, eyeball and the fangs in his mouth. Uh, I've painted the the lips, black. Um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll mix this up. I start by painting in the eyeball, then the iris, and then the pupil. And this is really where it starts to come to, to, to life. And if you don't know how to paint eyes and would like me to do a video strictly on eye painting, put it in the comments. I've got an extra werewolf head I could actually paint some eyes for you and we can we can talk about the techniques of painting eyes uh, but then after I get all the eyes painted then we will coat them with a little clear coat because the eyes should be glossy and wet looking just as the teeth and lips should be as well so um, we'll get all that painted up and this is going to really start to come to, to life and and look like a werewolf While I work on and build the rock formation base, let me tell you a little bit about myself. When I was young, I was really into these monsters, the, the werewolf and Frankenstein and Dracula and all that. I read uh, monster magazines, and I actually thought I wanted to be a movie makeup artist and, and do this kind of stuff and make these creatures and stuff. 
Um, that that didn't end up happening, but uh, I still never lost my love of of the the old universal creatures. Um, and then in my model building. These were always some of my favorite model kits to build. I loved them because I, I love the little bit of the painting, you know. So it it really is something I enjoy. And to this day, it's still some of my favorite models to build. So the first layer of paints on his pants were dry and I, I blended them in and stuff. Uh, I wanted to do some more work and some more layers. Uh, highlight a few other spots. I wanted to put some mud around the cuffs of the pants and on on the knees and stuff because you know he's he's a werewolf running through the forest and he's probably got mud on his feet and stuff. So I'm gonna uh, use some mud uh, effect stuff and put that all, all over his his lower parts and uh, but you can see the pants are really starting to take shape uh, and I even where they're torn completely through I have some of the hair actually glued in there so it kind of pokes out and you know maintains the illusion uh, all the way down to his feet so this is a mud a product from ak interactive and uh, basically you just kind of dip your brush in and splotch it on wherever you need some mud works great i've used it several times in several projects i've used it in the uh who, who's that guy on the horse from frank frazetta the What's his name? I can't even remember it. If you remember it, put it in the comments. You know, he's got the battle axe in his hand. He's sitting on that death... The death dealer, that's it. The death dealer model. I, I use this mud effect all over the base of that. Um, I like the product. You just kind of splotch it on wherever you need it. It works great on armor models and stuff like that. Fantastic product. Uh, nice to always have a jar of it laying around. So I'm just kind of splotching that on. I'm putting some actually on his feet and on the, the hair of his feet and on the pants and all, all of his lower areas, you know. Uh, and then we'll let that dry. So the rock base just got uh, a, a nice flat gray finish. And after that's dry, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a contrasting gray, like a little bit darker, and I'm going to dry brush that gray over the lighter gray and bring out a lot of the details of the rocks. Then, yeah, there's more. Then I'm going to bring in some uh, panel liners, some brown and black, and I'm going to start putting some uh, highlights in the nooks and crannies. Uh, and I may even use a little bit of the oil brushers in some of the upper surfaces to give them a little bit lighter hue. But uh, this is going to help bring these rocks to life and make them look a little more realistic because right now they are monolithic and kind of toy looking. So we'll do all that. Then we'll actually paint out the word plate where it says Wolfman. We'll paint that out. And that should really bring this base home. Now, this really isn't me. This isn't in keeping with me. Um, I never really liked doing the glow-in-the-dark stuff because I enjoyed the, the challenge of painting all this stuff. So normally I would be all about painting the, the skull and the rats and stuff like that that come with this. But because I want to do a little bit of an homage to the kit, I am actually going to do the skull and the rats just straight out of the box, um, glow in the dark. And so I just glued those together and now I'm gluing them onto the rock base and we'll let those dry and they're just going to be the glow-in-the-dark parts. Uh, they're, they're not going to have that same realistic feel that I was going for with the Wolfman, but, you know, you'll get the idea that it's it's a little bit of a, a, a wink and a nod to the original kits that I love so much. All right, I, we're at the end of the road. i got to tell you I'm a little happy to be at the end of the road because... When, when you challenge yourself with something completely different, like hair on a werewolf, um, it can make a simple project take 10 times as long, a little, add a lot of stress to the project. There, there's a lot of things going on there. And so, yes, 
I'm glad it's done. That's first. Second, I think it came out great. Okay, I really do. But I understand it's not very photogenic. It, it when you when you get in there, it looks like crap, and you're gonna look at the the glamour shots and think, eh, I don't know about this. Okay, and I wish you all could just come over and see it in person. I really do. Maybe what I'll do is I'll take a picture from a little further back that would be more rep representative of what you would see with your eyeball and let you see that. And, and that way you get a better idea of what it really looks like. That's what I'm going to try and do. That's, that's exactly what I'm going to try and do. In addition to the closer shot, so you can see the, the stuff that I did there, I'm going to try and capture a shot that really is the essence of what it looks like. And I implore you, give me your comments, good, bad, or otherwise. I don't care. I'd love to hear what you think of this project. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the Wolfman. All right, well, here he is, the Wolfman. And look, I, I haven't seen this video as I'm because I'm recording it and saying this at the same time, but I'm assuming that this is going to be more in keeping with what I'm seeing here. Because as I'm seeing it and looking at it, it looks pretty darn good. I'm actually kind of happy with it. But man, it is the least photogenic thing I've ever seen. Um, and you'll notice I didn't put down a lot of uh, uh, glamour shots because it's it's misleading. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. Would I do it this way again? No. Absolutely not. Because I, I think you need uh, a different set of skills than I possibly have. Um, I think I could make it look better with paint. But you know, I I did the same thing with the where the the mummy, and I think that came out phenomenal. I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, I just wouldn't choose to go this path again. And look, I have a thick skin. As long as you're respectful, you can be honest with me and tell me, you know, yeah, I'm not feeling it. And I, I get it, okay. But I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm putting hair on the werewolf. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I really want to know what you think about this project. And should I do another one? Should I do another werewolf in paint? Maybe we can compare and see how they come out. I don't know. Let me know what you think. All right, that's going to do it for today. I hope the rest of your day is phantasmagorically wonderful. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.